What is up everyone? I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees. In today's video, we're talking about the Yankees 7-2 win over the Oakland Athletics. There's plenty to talk about. The Yankees had plenty of offense today. Um, and, and of course, you know, anytime the Yankees have a win like this, obviously, you don't want to overreact one way, but it feels great. You know, the Yankees are a team that kind of needs to get the ball rolling, right? They haven't had a stretch where they've played, you know, particularly dominant baseball uh, since really they started, they started that streak early in the season where they won every series they played. So, um, you know, with that being said, I'm very excited to talk about today's game. It's nice to talk about a win and kind of, you know, a, a little bit more of a less stressful win. I know things got dicey in the sixth inning there, but for the most part, the Yankees were in control. So uh, without further ado, before we get into today's video, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. We're, ta we're constantly talking about the Yankees. We've got plenty of content coming out. Uh, we'd love for you guys to be a part of it. So make sure you guys join the Fireside Co Yankees community. And with that being said, let's get started with the pitching. And Nestor Cortez wasn't particularly dominant today um I thought he could have been a lot better uh, but he got the job done two runs five innings pitch six hits two walks four strikeouts I still feel like Nestor's trying to find himself I don't think he's necessarily found uh what he was last year just yet but um I have the utmost confidence that he'll figure it out eventually there's a really talented pitcher still a guy with still excellent stuff um, it's just a mat matter of capturing, um, you know, what he had last year. Uh, and it's some, 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 sometimes he's going to struggle. Sometimes he's going to have stretches where he's not dominant. Um, and this just happened to be one of those games. I thought this could be a get-me-right game for him. Wasn't exactly that. Um, he's still rebounding after a horrible start against the Texas Rangers that really inflated his stats. Um, but, you know, end of the day, he's he's got to pitch a little bit better than this, especially for a Yankee team that's kind of depleted in the bullpen and the rotation. Um, but again, not the worst signing in the world, just not stellar. Um, following him was Rob Marinaccio, who didn't have his A game in terms of command, but was able to get out at sixth inning without giving up the uh, more than two runs. One inning pitch, two hits, two walks, one strikeout. Again, not what you typically expect from Marinaccio. He was kind of wild all day, um, but he got the job done. But following him was Ian Hamilton, the feel-good story of the New York Yankees this year. Two strikeouts, one inning pitch, gets out of a jam in the seventh that Marinaccio put himself in. He's been excellent for the Yankees all season. He's arguably their best reliever. He's ridiculous. I, I couldn't be happier with the production you're getting. I'm getting from Ian Hamilton. And I don't think you could say much more else, right? You know, obviously when you bring in a non-roster invite, you're not expecting them to come in and be this. Um, but I feel like you know this is he's been one of the best relievers in baseball. I don't think it's an exaggeration. I don't think it's me, um, you know, getting ahead of myself here. He's genuinely been that good, and I, I think he deserves the credit for being that good. He's he's phenomenal. Um, but you know he could seems to be so impressive and then following him was Nick Ramirez who tossed two innings pitch two hits no runs one walk one strikeout um you know solid just gave the Yankees some depth some uh depth and some uh, volume there eight some innings for the Yankees and now they have you know they still have Ian Hamilton probably available for tomorrow he didn't go yesterday so he'll likely be available tomorrow um you still have guys like Wandy Holmes King who should be available for tomorrow um and that's a big help especially knowing that you know the Yankees rotation typically struggles uh to pitch deep into games so definitely Definitely a huge asset for them to have and, you know, excellent job by Nick Ramirez to kind of get the job done and make sure the Yankees don't have to bring anyone else after him. Um, overall, can't be upset with this pitching performance. When you allow two runs, even when you get hit pretty hard, um, you know, that takes, there, there, there was a lot of gritty outings. There's a lot of gritty pitches, big pitches being made. Um, and I, I can't be happier with, uh, you know, not that I can't be happy with the result I'm getting from the pitching staff, but I, I can't ask for much more from these guys. As for the offense, they finally, you know, they, they, needed, they needed to just kind of get on a roll, and this is a nice boost for them. Glaber Torres hits his hardest ball of his career at 111.7 miles an hour. Um, that was his uh, third home run or fourth home run of the season. He had it homered in, in over a week. Um, he also added on a double. He went two for four today. Anthony Rizzo, two for three of the walk, continuing to just be a solid player for the Yankees this season. DJ LeMay tacked on a home run of his own, a solo shot. Um, Harrison Bader had an RBI, uh, not an RBI triple, excuse me, a triple and a walk. He would score on that uh, triple because of Oswaldo Cabrera, who hit a two-run shot himself, starting to look a bit better in these last couple of days. Still not all the way back, but just looking better. Jose Trevino went one for three of the single. And Aaron Hicks, I, I don't think people expected this. Aaron Hicks launched a two-run home run into right field. Um, he, you know, he's he was due, right? Um, you know, I don't think there's anyone on this team who needed uh, a pick-me-up, a, a big hit like that, more than Aaron Hicks, right? He really put this game away for the Yankees, and he allowed the Yankees to kind of cruise uh, into a win there. But, you know, end of the day, am I going to sit here and say Aaron Hicks is why this team won today? No, but does he deserve his flowers? Absolutely. That was, uh, you know, 
not the biggest home run in the world, but uh, certainly one that allows you to navigate this game differently and manage this game differently and save a lot of your bullets in the bullpen. Um, and, and it's a big, big thing for him to get that off his back. I, I know that it's not easy playing, uh, you know, in, in a crowd in front of a crowd that, quite frankly, wants something to do with you. And is it, you know, Yankee the fault of Yankee fans that people don't want anything to do with Aaron Hicks? No, he hasn't necessarily done himself many favors. Um, but end of the day, you know, uh, we're, we're Yankee fans. We're rooting for this team to succeed. And if Aaron Hicks can succeed, that's going to lead to the Yankees succeeding. But with that being said, you know, end of the day, the, the player of today's game kind of feels like a team effort, right? It's hard to really give it to one guy because they got offense from a lot of different places. Um, but you know what? I'm just going to say, I'm going to give it to, you know what? I'm going to give it to, I'm going to give it to Aaron Hicks. Um, he kind of just needs, he needed a win. He needed a uh, moment. And I think he, he, him finally getting that off his back with the home run um, is huge for him. Um, honorable mention for Gleyber Torres, who, you know, now his WRC plus is 119 on the season, starting to hit the ball a little bit harder. You know, that's going to be huge for him going forward and for the Yankees going forward because they need him. And then, of course, tomorrow, getting back Aaron Judge, right? Um, that is going to be huge for the Yankees, getting Aaron Judge back in there. Um, I wonder what the roster room for Judge will be. I don't think it's going to be an Aaron Hicks DFA. I think it'll be one of Jake Bowers or Willie Calhoun getting optioned. I'm curious as to what it is, but we'll have to wait and see on that. We're, we're, we'll speculate that uh, on that tomorrow, probably, or maybe we get the news on that before we record the morning podcast. But if you guys want to check out the morning podcast and check out what we're doing with Fireside Yankees, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on those post notifications so you guys know what we're posting. We've got you guys with fire content, incredible stuff on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, Twitter, and of course, this YouTube page. If you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure to drop a five-star rating. I'm Ryan Garcia, ESM. You can follow me on Twitter with that Twitter handle, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for showing us love. Peace out.